What if I told you the most difficult challenge in Horizon Forbidden West was not beating the game on ultra hard mode while only using rocks for weapons? What if I told you instead that the most difficult challenge was walking across the entire map all while Aloy remains totally silent? What? Okay, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but it's no easy task. Don't believe me? Yeah, keep watching. Shut up. What's good, everybody? At some point of consuming media covering the Horizon franchise, it was mentioned that a common criticism people have of the series' protagonist is that she talks too much. I guess I was one of the lucky ones who hadn't noticed this before. Sure, I found it annoying when she would reveal the solution to a puzzle before I'd even had a chance to think about it. There's a ladder, but I can't reach it from here. Nothing a well-placed arrow can't knock free. Just have to target the lock. After you. But the general chatter as she moves around the map wasn't something I'd paid a lot of attention to, at least until it was brought to my attention. After that, there was no way to not notice it. I could get around faster if I find a charger to override. I can override one of these chargers. I have to go on quiet so I won't spook the herd. And so the concept for this challenge was set. What I would attempt to do is see how far I could walk Aloy across the map without her saying a word. The starting point for the journey would be the easternmost shelter, and the goal would be the westernmost shelter. I thought back to my time playing the game to figure out what events would cause Aloy to start chattering away and started clearing as many of those obstacles as I could. This means relic ruins, black boxes, and rebel camps all had to be looted or cleared out in order to keep Aloy's mouth shut if she got near them, getting wet, using the shield wings, slipping down a cliff, scanning machines, and getting spotted were also not advised as each risk generated generating a comment. I thought if I could eliminate those eight things, I'd be left with only comments I couldn't control, such as about the weather or the time of day. And with that in mind, let's watch this journey unfold. Okay, day one of this journey starts with a fun fact. Have you seen this stat that up to 70% of people don't have an internal monologue? Apparently Aloy is one of them because she clearly wasn't focusing on rule number eight. I've encountered one machine and already I've been spotted. Fortunately, she kept her mouth shut long enough to break the rule again and also break rule number seven, all within the first 10 minutes of the run. What a smashing start. I'd been living dangerously so far, so I decided to stop by a shelter as nightfall approached. I was afraid she would comment on the coming night, so I advanced time to the next morning. Not long after that, tragedy struck. I again broke rule number seven in a momentary lapse in judgment, and it cost me dearly. Should try something other than fire. Still, I'd made it roughly 40% of the way to my goal on attempt number one. Not bad. Okay, time to focus and clean up my act now. If I can eliminate the self-inflicted wounds, this challenge will be easy. And clean up my act I did. At least until I got to around 1500 meters into the run and again broke rule number eight. My third try was clean up until this group of well-wishers showed up to cheer me on. Let's go. I slaughtered them all. Finally, on attempt number four, a new record was set for the shortest attempt ever. Oh, my fingers feel stiff in this cold. They say you should count your blessings. In this case, I'm thankful for a short walk back to the starting point. I'm thankful you're watching this video. And I'm thankful it's a beautiful day to get spotted and hear Aloy's insightful commentary, thus ending attempt number five. Tax suspicious. I returned for a new day of recording after I recovered from dying a little inside. This time was going to be different. I had my route planned out for the early part of the map, up this cliff, through chain scrape, barren light, across the plain, stop the shelter, toward the desert, all while staying out of sight of the machines. I had made it further than I had ever been, but night was upon me once again. I thought I needed to find a shelter soon or run the risk of Aloy commenting about how it was getting dark or how pretty the stars are or something like that. All I had to do was chill out for the night here and continue in the more- I can catch my breath here. Uh... Turns out the very thing I thought would prevent Aloy from commenting caused her to say something. So that means for the rest of this, shelters are out of the question except for the one I'm trying to reach as the end goal. I can't even approach the other ones. By the seventh attempt, Aloy was thinking of new ways to make me suffer. I thought I had all possible triggers for her blabbering taken off the map, but I hadn't considered one thing. Random events. What is that? In this case, I ran across an ambush while trying to avoid flying machine. I cleared it, thinking it would remove it from the map for future runs by doing so. Surely this line of thinking would not come back to hurt me. Attempt 8 once again saw Aloy competing for the record of shortest run ever. 
as she couldn't even make it five seconds without commenting on the weather. I can feel this frost down to my bones. Which means, at this point, she's basically a boomer. My ninth effort might as well have been a replay of Attempt 7 as I ran into the exact same random event from before, what is that? even though I thought I had cleared the ambush. It was now abundantly clear I had to do something different. So I quit playing video games and worked on a plan to fix world hunger. Is what I would have said if I had ambition. Instead, I devoted my time to figuring out an optimum route. Having made it to Baron Light several times consistently, I kept the first part of the route the same. But after clearing the gate, I decided to go right instead of left. The idea was to stay along the remote northern border of the map. This seemed like a good idea at the time, but during the tenth attempt, I didn't see a way to climb to the northernmost plateau. This resulted in this really sketchy section where I'm swinging along the cliffs, trying to avoid the sky drifters. To my surprise, I made it past them without getting spotted, and Aloy remained silent. I passed through Plainsong as day turned to night and headed toward the mountain pass. I made my way carefully down the mountain and passed Scalding Spear for the first time. This was officially the furthest I had ever been, but I wasn't home free yet, not by a long shot. I ran into a cluster of machines in front of the memorial grove and had to be careful to sneak past unseen. And sneak past I did, all the way into the jungle where try-hard Aloy decided to say something inspirational, like how sweat was weakness leaving the body. Oh, the sweat, I'm still not cooling off. Okay, what she said wasn't actually inspirational, and far worse, it ended what was easily my best attempt yet. I had traveled 4,813 meters or feet or whatever unit of measurement this game uses, all without Aloy saying a word. The experience of making it so far only to fail yet again, left me questioning if I should quit video games forever and focus on charity work. But there was no time for that. Aloy was too busy being selfish. Apparently not talking for that long left her gravely injured. It was determined that going all the way across the map without talking would cause her to die, which is arguably a worse fate than being a ginger. So it was determined to use the Memorial Grove as a checkpoint. Finally, I would get to see the second half of the map again. The basic strategy for the second half of the map was to avoid the snow and swim as much as possible to avoid the risk of being spotted by machines. I made it to the boat to San Francisco without too much trouble, and thankfully Aloy isn't programmed to say something during this cutscene. But once on the island, I encountered a new threat to Aloy's silence. Currents. Swimming for too long against a current will lead to Aloy telling the player she can't swim against the current and needs to turn back. I was getting out of the water to avoid this scenario when... I better shake off this wet. <sighs> Dang it. Back to the maw of the arena as I attempted the second part of this run once again. I was on a mission. Through the jungle, past the machines, into the water, into the boat, into Fortnite, around the coast, and onto the island where the westernmost shelter, the finish line for this entire run, is located. <sighs> sweet, sweet victory. If you enjoyed this video, check out one of the recommended videos. This is my first time covering the Horizon series, so it's been a nice change of pace for me as a creator. I may as well roll the end screen now because nothing could possibly go wrong. All I have to do is call the Sunwing to get up to the shelter and save the game at the campfire. Getting down now. Son of a.